Good afternoon everybody, what is going on? I am Jeff Grant Media and today's Real User Review, we are going to be taking a look at the Arch Grizzetti Backpack. Now I, uh, I'm very stoked on this bag, I like it a lot, so there's the spoiler, I like this bag. It's going to be a predominantly positive review. Now to get the disclaimer out of the way up front and early, I am not affiliated with Arch in any way. I simply saw a review of this bag on another platform, really liked it, did a little digging, did a little contacting uh, the company and ended up getting one on my own with my own money. So I'm not being paid to say anything positive. I'm not being paid to say anything negative about this bag. Now, with that out of the way, you may not have heard of Arch. So who is Arch? What is Arch? Where is Arch? Arch is actually a uh, Italian custom bag company that uh, actually focuses on cycling materials, but they can pretty much build anything you want, though they do have some standard designs that they use to feature their work. And by their work, I mean his work. Arch is a one-man show. So from everything from building your bags, designing your bags, shipping your bags, answering your emails, running the social media, it is all one man and his name is Andre. And he has, uh, he's been building bags for about 11 years now. Um, he is based out of Italy, started in Milan and then moved up into the mountains where he uh, kind of wanted to find his own way. And uh, I think he did it. I, I'm really, I'm really happy with this overall design. Again, this is the Arch Grizzetti. Now it's a custom bag, so I did, uh, I added some features that uh, we had talked about. We're going to get into all of that, but uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and do a spec rundown so you can see exactly what this bag is made out of and uh, the size of it. My Grizzetti comes in at 22.04 inches in height, 11.02 inches in width, and 8 inches in depth. It weighs two and a half pounds, and the back is 30 liters plus the roll top expansion. The main body and roll top of my bag is a black VX21. The front panel is a PU coated Cordura. The front pocket is Dura Stretch with a Cordura band across the top. The side water bottle pockets are made from a mesh. The bottom of the bag is 100% Kevlar, and the lining is a red PU coated ripstop nylon. And my build came in at $450 USD, which included shipping from Italy. The lead time for a build is generally 40 days. If he's not so slammed, it could be as low as 30 days. But it is a custom bag, so you are going to have to wait a little while to get it built and sent to you. Now in building up your bag, you can pretty much get these things made in any colors. There's some crazy cool wild like 80s themed bags that he's made. I went with a simple black and red and yes, he, uh, he actually matched the paracord to the interior of the bag, which is a bright red coating, which was my choice. I wanted the red. So he will pretty much buy, if he doesn't have on hand, the materials to create your bag. So you can get this in any color you can imagine. He'll just buy it because that's what you want. That's what he's gonna give you. And in our email conversations, he seemed like a super cool guy. So if you want something crazy, he's probably gonna try to get it for you. He even went as far as to put the little accent tabs on the back of the bag. He made those red as well. Now with any product, it's not 100% positive, and even though I really, really like this bag, it does have some negatives. So we're gonna go ahead and start there. And the first and biggest negative is something that's happening here inside this water bottle pocket. We have the roll top over bag, and we have these compression straps on the side. Now, if you unsnap the compression strap, you can see it goes inside the water bottle pocket which again, it's gonna be hard to see because you're looking at black on black through mesh. Now inside this pocket we have, at the bottom here, there's actually a seam about, where is it, about here, and then a seam in the back about here. And what's happening is there's a loop of webbing. So picture just this piece of webbing and it's sewn into the seams creating this little loop here. Now this strap is actually tied around that loop so I can actually remove this if I wanted to and then this would probably become a non-issue but the way that I had my bag designed because Arch generally designs their bags. So once you roll the bag the roll top has a male and female buckle that you would just simply snap together. 
So this was one of my additions because I wanted to be able to really compress this bag and I honestly liked the look of this a little bit better. So I could remove this completely and then what I'm about to show you is a non-issue, but this was one of my design adds to the bag that I really wanted. So we take our standard Camelback Shoot 750 milliliter. We try to go behind the compression strap and we're gonna get caught in this little Y that we have down here. So what we have to do is you have to make sure you take your compression strap and go in front of it. So you take the strap, push it towards the back of the bag, and then you're gonna wanna take the water bottle in front of it. Now what's gonna happen is now we're gonna get caught on that knot down there. So you kinda just have to push the knot in and get the water bottle past it. It doesn't take much, you kinda just stick your finger in there, push the knot in, and then you can cinch it down and this water bottle isn't gonna go anywhere. It's just a little bit annoying to do so. Now, they could have attached this compression strap between the side and back body with this compression strap, but then you're gonna have all of this excess dangling, especially if you have the roll top and you are really stuffing the bag and now your bag's up high. I have this compression strap that would be just dangling down here and that would just be annoying and get in the way. You could kind of tuck it through this other strap, but that would become an issue. So I think this is just Arch's cleanest way of of doing this strap and it's not bad it's not a bad design it's just something that i found a little bit annoying is that this knot was in the way so kind of just inhibited the water bottle from going in very easily and the only other negative is this little piece of paracord right here i like it it's nice it, it's easy to grab i can help you to pull and take the front of the bag so you can unzip the bag to get the front access but what happens is it actually gets in the way of this pocket here now sometimes you can see it'll just push to the side but sometimes this will actually get caught in the zipper so honestly i would just uh, just eliminate it it's it's nice it's nice little accents to it but you don't really need it you can just grab the actual front little flap there and pull it up no problem I do like it I've kind of just been tucking it up and pushing it down so it's just out of the way because then it doesn't really become an issue when I'm trying to use this pocket because otherwise it does sometimes it will get in the way and the zipper will not zipper and that's it just those two negatives are what I found from this bag um, nothing was a real deal breaker um, they're more annoying than anything uh, but that's really it and now uh, a couple of neutral points and we're gonna start with the straps of the back now the straps are they're kind of thin but I like that because they're pliable I hate when there's a strap that is super thick and super fat and super padded they don't bend they don't flex it actually makes the bag uncomfortable to wear now these are pretty thin and uh, they have already broken in quite a bit especially the left shoulder strap right around here where it would kind of come right right where it comes around my uh, clavicle is that what this bone is called right here um i think they could have added just a little bit more padding to it now this bag has been in no way uncomfortable to wear and this is actually probably my favorite bag right now and i'm actually kind of bummed that uh I have to move on to something else to do a review because I'm really, really, really enjoying this bag. So again, by no means is it uncomfortable to wear. And I think that over time, it's still gonna remain comfortable, but I would have just liked to see just a tiny bit more padding in these straps. I think it would add to the longevity of it. And uh, the next one is probably going to be a little bit nitpicky, but um, a front pocket here is dura stretch so it is quite stretchy and you can fit a lot in there but this piece of banding across the top is actually some core dura so you can't actually stuff it to its full capacity because this banding across the top is gonna kind of prevent that so if they just simply didn't include this banding and the shock cord to zip it in, you could actually fit a lot more into this pocket. Now, again, this is more of a personal preference. Um, I could see that people would like to zip this down and secure it because sometimes when you take your notebook that you access all the time, you just throw it in there. If you're bouncing around, this thing could kind of come out. So I, you know, people would like to zip that down to make that a little more secure in there. I personally would uh, like to see that this be gone and just have this as one big dirt stretch pocket so I can really fit a lot of stuff in there because I'll put 
things other than a notebook in there. You just, uh, I usually usually utilize this when I'm dad bagging it to throw all of my daughter's stuff in there, toy, hats in the winter. So sometimes I overstuff these front Dura stretch pockets. And if I didn't have this banding here, I can really, really fit a lot more crap in this pocket. And now that you know that there is a piece of quarter banding across the top of the Dura stretch, if you didn't want it there, you could probably just ask him to not include it in his build process. And uh, the next and last neutral point is uh, it's, it's something pretty funny. Uh, I struggled with this in the unboxing video, trying to open the front flap of the bag. And uh, it's the front flap to get access to the front zipper panels here. I was expecting this panel here to actually flip all the way up, but the sides are actually attached to the bag because I was expecting this flap to just unvelcro and flip straight up. And uh, I couldn't figure out why it wasn't doing that uh, because it's, it's meant to be that way for rain protection because now it's just a flap that it tucks under and there's no extra sides, side openings that would allow water or debris or anything to get inside the bag. So it's actually designed that way, but stupid me expected this to just kind of unvelcro and flip directly back. And you can see when I'm trying to pull it, it pulls the sides of the bag in, and that's just to prevent an extra opening in the bag that could potentially let stuff in at the top of the zippers on either side. And that's it. There's not a lot of negatives and neutral points to this bag, and nothing I said is a deal breaker. And my biggest negative is actually something that I had added to the bag because Arch doesn't standard make the Grisetti with these side compressions for the roll top. They just snap it across the top. So that's actually my addition there that kind of became an issue. And it's a, there's an easy workaround. It was a little bit annoying, but I can get, get by with it. And again, nothing is a deal breaker. Now to get into the positives of this bag, I mean, I, I already I said it up front, I love this bag. I'm very, very, very satisfied with this pack. It has done everything that I have asked it to do. And I actually traveled with this bag. Yes, I went on vacation. Didn't go for long, didn't go far. We went down to the shore. And uh, I will say it was far from one bag travel, but I personally had all of my stuff in one bag, which was my Grisetti. So I put all of my clothes, my bathing suits, and all the crap that I needed, my dop kit, everything, it fit in here. Now I got a two and a half year old, so there was the car was full. The car was packed to the gills of stuff. But all my things fit nice and neat inside one bag, which was great. So it uh First positive, it can accommodate a large packing cube with all of my clothes for the beach and um, brought some extra stuff because I hadn't been on vacation in a long time and kind of forgot what to pack. So I actually brought way more stuff than I needed and uh, everything fit in here great. They've swallowed the packing cube and then it all packed in with the roll top down. So I still had plenty of capacity if I needed to add anything else or if I bought anything on the way and uh, I needed to carry it back home. Though I was in the car, I didn't need to carry much, but I could have if I was just traveling with this bag. So first positive, it can do one bag of travel, no problems, because the bag itself is 30 liters with the roll top I forget how much the capacity of the roll top is. It's probably more than five liters though, because it's kind of wide and it does go quite tall. Now, the other positive is the size of this bag. Now, this is a 30 liter pack. And I've said this plenty of times before, 30 liters is pretty big for an EDC. Um, but because the shape of this bag, it's easier to see from the back if you can, because it's black, it does kind of, it tapers in a little bit. And because, I think because I added these roll top compressions on the side, it really does help to pull the bag in. So I feel like it's definitely bigger than like a, a some of the 20, low 20s, 22, 25 liter packs that I have been using as EDCs, but it doesn't feel like a 30 liter. Cause I used to EDC a Bio Gear spare camel, did that for like probably a year and a half, two years, like as my daily EDC. And that's a 30 liter pack. And that thing, it's big, it looks big. I fit a lot in there. And the problem I find with larger EDC packs is I end up carrying things that I don't actually need. So if I have a 30 liter bag, 
I end up carrying way more than I need for the day. And then when there's something you actually need to grab, you have to sort through all the junk that you don't actually need to find it. But I didn't have that problem with the Arch because I didn't feel like I was carrying a 30 liter pack. I pretty much kept my EDC in here and I don't think I really added much or anything throughout the, uh, I've been testing this now for at least a month, probably a month and a half. And um, I didn't add anything extra into the bag that I wouldn't normally carry because I had the space. So I I didn't, uh, I, I'd like the bag again because it didn't feel like I was carrying a 30 liter pack on the daily. Now going into the features, I love this front dirt stretch pocket. I took it out, it's over here. I have been keeping my video journal in there because I have been accessing this quite a bit lately, so I've been sticking that right in there. It's easy to grab. Um, I did get caught in a little bit of rain, and when I did, I just simply took it out, stuck it on the inside, and now it's completely protected. And uh, But for quick access, I like to keep that in there. And I did keep a couple extra things in there. I also really, really liked... There's no real admin panel, so I've been using this top pocket between the shoulder straps to keep... Flip it the other way. My ID badge for work. Then I keep my writing implements in there. Fat Sharpie pen fine point sharpie so when i do need to grab that journal my pen is right there because there's no place to stick this in my journal so those have been my two quick grab quick access pockets for stuff that i use or need daily and fast I keep the notebook in the front so i can grab it and jot down any ideas i need any specs that i need to for a bag review and then i keep my id badge that I need Monday through Friday and I keep that right on the top of the bag so I can grab that when I'm going in. There's also the pen in there so I can sign in. Um, sometimes they keep changing the policy. I have to do a temperature check and I have to okay it and initial it so I don't like to touch the pens that they have there. I like to use my own pen because why would they give me a bucket of pens when they're trying to keep me social distance from people? Why would they want me to use the same pen as a hundred other people? So I use my own pen. So that's a quick grab, quick access item for me. Now the next positive is actually access to this bag. There is a lot of access to get into the pack. We can uh, start with the most obvious, which is our roll top. I can easily see everything that's down there. And that includes my laptop sleeve, my side pockets, and everything that's crammed into the main body of the bag. The only thing I have a hard time seeing from the roll top down is what's in the two mesh zipper pockets on the front panel. But to get to that front panel, I simply unzip the sides. This is the easiest way to do it too. Unzip the zippers first and then pop the Velcro and then boom, it drops down and I can see everything inside my bag, my full contents, my journal, my admin pocket, my new journal because the other one's almost empty and this is my workout logs, my pouches, stuff on either side and then I can also see what's in the front panel which I have first aid kit and this is like a, a supplemental first aid kit and things I need like there's some cortisone in there and some other odds and ends lip balm stuff like that and then this is just your standard boo-boo kit in here that I grabbed from Amazon and then supplemented with some of my own additions to make it actually work for me so I have that access now also to get access to the main panel this all back together super quick. Oh, that's easier. Put it back how I normally use it. Now, another point of access is I don't have to totally 
open the front, I can just open one of the sides and I can easily get in and I can access the pocket on the side and I can do the same thing for the other side of the bag. If I needed to get more access to this pocket, I just have to unzip one of the sides. Now, one of the options that Andre offered me was to not include the the uh, Velcro here and the double access to kind of clamshell the bag open. He does do just a single side zipper, but with the way I went, I can actually do the single side on either side. I'm not stuck to it being on one side and I can still totally access the bag and clamshell and see everything no problem. And wait, there's more. You also have rear access to your laptop sleeve. So you can just take your laptop in and out. So if I don't need my tech kit or anything, I can quick grab my laptop. Or if I need my tech kit, I can take my laptop out and then unzip the front, take my tech kit out. And that's how I have generally been accessing this bag on the daily is I take my laptop in and out through the back and then I've been just side accessing for my tech kit and if I need my admin panel, anything like that, I've been using the side access because I found it to, Andre was right, this is very convenient and very easy, but I like that I still can totally fold open and clamshell the bag open if I need to because sometimes you need to get in there and if I only had one side access, I wouldn't have as much access to the two zipper part compartments on the front. And while we're still close to talking about the laptop access, the rear laptop access of this bag is actually really nice. The laptop fits in there completely simply by unzipping and sliding it in. Several other bags that I've used that have rear laptop access, the laptop doesn't actually fit all the way into the bag. You have to actually take the other seam and tuck the laptop in, but with the Grisetti, it fits right in, so it's not a problem, and I really, really like that. Now, the one pocket I haven't really used too much was this big pocket here, and it's a deep pocket. That's kind of why it's really deep. It goes probably three quarters of the front of the back. Like it goes, if I take this tablet out, you can see my hand at the bottom. It goes to, yeah, it goes all the way to the seam on the bottom of the bag right here. This is the seam of the Kevlar bottom and the front pocket, your dirt stretch and your interior zipper pocket both end right here. So it gives you, all of this space here. There's a lot of space. Now it is a little narrower of a pocket, so I can't fit, say, my tablet doesn't fit in there. It's just a little too wide, so I can't fully utilize it. Um, I could see maybe using this as an admin panel, but my admin pocket is also a little bit too wide. So if I got something a little bit smaller, if I had like maybe a pencil roll or something, I could easily toss that in there. So I haven't really used this for too much. I've thrown a few things in there, but I haven't used that pocket too, too much. But this has been my main go-to zippers. Another positive about this pack that I really love is this daisy chaining. Now, generally, have it on my shoulder strap because I've I've been keeping it here because most of my packs do not have a daisy chain. But uh, what I normally would do is take, you know, this is just, what is this, the Night Eyes, it's just an S Beaner bottle opener. I'll normally take this and would clip that to one of these daisy chains because then it's a, it's a little quicker and easier to access, especially if uh, we're out and about and someone needs a bottle opener. Um, I can just say, hey, turn around. They can pop it off one of the daisy chains. If I don't do this backwards, it's so much easier to do. Black on black, upside down and backwards is hard. Pop it, bring the bottle, put it back on, good to go. Also, I usually will throw like a carabiner on here. And I didn't do it this time because I traveled in my car, but if I'm traveling by plane or train, um, generally, I will really utilize these daisy chains on the outside of a bag. I almost always carry hand sanitizer with me even before 2019 happened and uh, the world went to hell. Um, and I'll, I'll throw some other odds and ends on the outside of the pack as well. Um, so I do utilize these quite a bit. And when I'm dad bagging, didn't really use this as a dad bag. Um, I will, I utilize these daisy chains a lot for dad bags as well. And lastly, we have two grab handles. Now, I don't generally like these thin ones because sometimes they dig into your hand, um, but these are doubled over. It's a nice material. It 
feels good in the hand. It does, you know, it's thin, so you can feel that it's a thinner strap. It's not distributing the weight of the bag across the palm of my hand very, very well. But because it is a little bit softer and it's doubled over, it does work out really nice. And I generally don't like dual handles, but it worked out really well so I can throw my hero clip on one, which I have been using also to uh, clip a hat to, using this as a regular carabiner. So I've been clipping my hero clip on one and using the back one as my actual grab handle. So I can actually utilize this for passovers in the car and I get to work and I wanna grab my bag from the passenger seat. I will grab it, sling it on the shoulder and then I'll jump out of the car. And when I'm getting back in, I'll pass it over and it works out really well. I'm not utilizing it over long carries, so it's not terrible that it's a little bit thinner piece of webbing. I do prefer a fatter piece of webbing, but also because it's thinner, it has a smaller footprint on the back of the bag. Now my two applications on this bag, Travel and EDC, the bag was very, very comfortable to wear. Now, yes, I said it could use a little bit more padding in the shoulder straps, but they were still completely comfortable to wear. I feel like over time, maybe it's gonna break down and I'd like to see just a little bit thicker padding in there, but overall, wearing this bag was very comfortable. I had no issues, even without the hip belt. The bag does also feature load lifters, which do help to distribute the load and dial in your carry. So that was a pleasure. And yes, like I just said, you can have a hip belt on this bag, but if you've been watching, I'm not a hip belt guy, so I generally don't go in for the hip belts. So that would go across the back. And I believe they are removable, but because I knew I wasn't gonna use it, I just didn't even have them go there. So it probably cut down on a little bit of the cost for me because it was just one less thing that he had to actually the manufacture and so and put into the back so it was less materials and less work for him for something that I wasn't going to use anyway but it was comfortable to wear over the duration especially walking around down at the shore we walked around the boardwalk for probably a couple hours in the heat and the bag was totally fine to wear totally comfortable the entire time and this Kevlar bottom was great because not only is it abrasion resistant, it's kind of rubbery. So when you set the bag down, it doesn't have that tendency to skirt around or slide around on the floor because it's rubbery. So it grips. So you don't have to worry about when you're setting the bag down and then just slowly does that slide away. Um, wasn't an issue here. There is an internal frame sheet of the bag, which does help again with that carry. Um, especially since I don't like hip belts. I didn't have a ton of weight in this bag anyway, so I don't really feel like I needed a hip belt. Um, I'm, I'm using this as an, like an urban EDC pack. I'm not carrying 30, 40 pounds in here. I'm not rucking with this. I'm not hiking with this. If I'm doing one bag travel with this, um, even when I do do one bag travel, like international travel or anything like that, I don't use the hip belts when I have a lot of weight. So um, the back panel, it gives, there's still some flex to the bag. It's not super rigid, which is what I like. I don't know what it is. Um, I can find out if you would like to know. I can go ahead and uh, email Andre and find out, but I like when it's not super, super rigid. I hate when it feels like you have like a steel plate in there and the bag has no bend at all. Um, but this is nice, there's enough flex in there. It felt good. It does kind of conform to the body a little bit. So it was also very, very comfortable to carry with the frame sheet. All in all, I am very satisfied with this bag. So all in all, would I buy this bag again? Yes, absolutely, I would buy this bag again. I would probably tweak one or two things now that I have the bag in my hands and see it, but ultimately, if I ordered it and got this exact same bag again, I would be very, very satisfied with the pack. Wait time, you're ordering a custom bag from a completely different country halfway around the world. So yeah, waiting, a month, month and a half to get your bag, that's expected. If you're ordering something custom, you're well aware of the wait. If it's your first time ordering something custom, slow down, it's okay. Your bag's gonna get there. You're ordering something that has to be built to your specifications. You have to get queued up. There's other people ahead of you. And uh, yeah, there's a little bit of a wait time. Price-wise, yeah, it's a little expensive. You're getting a custom-made bag, especially from like a small mom and pop shop. I don't even wanna call it a mom and pop shop. It's just like a pop shop. It's one dude, one guy doing it all. So that slows down uh, production a little bit, but that also means that you're getting more attention to detail. You don't have an assembly line going on. There's one guy doing it and it's his name on this bag. It's his name. He is Arch Design, Andre is Arch. So 
he's gonna make sure your bag is as perfect as it possibly could be because it's his reputation. So you're getting a lot for that price tag. The wait time is well worth it. Um, I'm very, very satisfied with this bag. I would 100% buy this exact bag again. If I were to order another arch bag tomorrow, I would probably build almost the identical bag. I would make probably two or three changes to it and uh, that would be it. I mean, I am, I'm very, very happy with this pack. I'm actually quite bummed that I have to move on to something else to do a review, but um, as soon as I don't have a pack to review, I'm coming right back to this arch bag because I'm, I'm that happy with this build. I just love the look of this bag. It's, it's just awesome. I, I love it. It worked for all my applications great. It's been holding up. I have not been gentle with it. I'm not gentle with, okay, I'm gentle with my things, my electronics, but uh, stuff that's meant to be used, I use it. I don't want to baby it. I want to see if it's going to work. I want to make sure that this bag or any product I use is going to do what it's supposed to do. And um, bags are meant to be worn. They're meant to be tossed around a little bit and they're meant to get used. And that's what I do. So all in all, if you were on the fence or considering or are now just being introduced to arch bags, they're great. I highly recommend them. Go ahead and shoot Andre an email. All of the information that you need is down below to his IG, to the email address. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them away to either me or Andre. He can is the better source to ask questions about his builds. But if you have any questions about my build, my bag, my experience, drop that in the comments down below. I answer almost all of my comments. If you're gonna be rude, I might just delete it, but if you have an honest question, I'm gonna answer it. So if you like this video or any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications next time I post a brand new video. Good night.